So we have the concert here at Feel It coming up. And this is an exploration of really the experience of individually what it's like to listen to music and what happens in your brain when that's going on. And while this isn't brain science, and I um, am here talking to Dr. Simon Carlyle, who does understand the brain science, it's a fascinating thing that we can occasionally have a glimpse of what our brain is doing while we're listening to music. So, let's do... So, a brain. That one looks beautiful. I've done a few. <laughs> okay, so here's auditory cortex. Now, what's happening in auditory cortex is his brain stem. Right. And so the, the, the sound that's striking the ear stimulates the inner ear and you get this massive amount of um, information, acoustic information that's coming mm -hmm. up um, through, the, uh, through the brain stem, through the midbrain and up onto cortex. So what's happening in auditory cortex is that um, you've got a fairly good representation of the whole of the acoustics of the space. Um, when you start moving outside auditory cortex to what are referred to as the belt and parabelt regions, something magical really begins to happen in that this representation of the acoustic space starts to become pared down to the things that you want to focus your attention on. Right. So the top-down um, uh, endogenous action of attention sharpens up the imagery of the perceptual objects. Right, yeah. So in musical terms, if you're listening to the orchestra, right. you can listen to it as a mass yeah. of sound, or you can say, I'm going to listen to the various choirs. Precisely or I'm going to listen to the brass and I want to hear what you know, trumpets and trombones are doing. Right. Um, now, they all become different objects. Right. So the, the, um, uh, the, the, you know, the, the choirs become different objects and you focus on one choir, or then within a choir, the, the different um, right. instruments within that become objects. And my bottom dollar would say that you, if I was looking at your brain while you were doing this, I would see these individual representations coming out and I'd see them dynamically changing right. in real time as you switched right. your attention from object to object. Right. And here's another thing I really like too. This is the, this is the, uh, the dorsal pathway. Um, but the, the thing about the dorsal pathway I really like is that here's motor cortex right. here and here is premotor. So the dorsal pathway puts a lot of information and integrates a lot of information with what's going on in premotor yeah. cortex. And so for me, the immediately that I learned that, it made it absolutely obvious why there's this incredible synergy between music and movement. Right. You know, yes. uh, and yeah. that, you know, dance and music and, yeah. and whether you're head banging at a, you know, right. uh, some kind of Metallica concert or whether right. it's much more refined in, in ballet or whatever. Or even, or even to the extent of the kind of the, the numinous sublime that we associate with religious yes. rites. Yes, absolutely. Where all of a sudden it slows the body down. That's right. Because it has this absolutely. sense, you know, in a great cathedral yeah. and so forth. Yeah, absolutely. yeah.